Good evening, everybody. This is Pastor Eric Lee, and this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We give God praise today for this 27th day of March 2024. It is the Wednesday of Holy Week. We thank God for Holy Wednesday, and I welcome you to Bible study here at Springfield Baptist Church. Please take time to subscribe to our YouTube page. Uh, hit us with some likes, hit us with some hearts, no matter what platform you're on. If you're on sbcgrowth.church, let us know you're in the chat room. If you're in uh, on our YouTube page or on Metaverse, we welcome you and we give you the opportunity to text someone, to let someone know that we're here at the Springfield Baptist Church during Holy Week to give God the praise, the glory, the honor, and to dedicate this hour uh, to understanding God's will, uh, to understanding the thoughts of God's, God towards us and to make sure that our thinking is uh, parallel to Christ's thinking. And I praise God for this opportunity and I praise God for each and every one of you. I'm still waving my palms from this past Sunday. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. We praise God for those of you who got a chance to come into the sanctuary this past Sunday. If you haven't heard the message, uh, go back and listen uh, to Palm Sunday Promises, and I pray that it'll be a blessing to you and to your families. Uh, we also want to prepare you for what will, we, what will be taking place in the remainder of this week. We want to make you aware that this Good Friday, there are two Last seven word services. One of them will take place at the St. Philip AME Church. Uh, and I am participating with the second word uh, as, a, as a preacher and a celebrant that day, as a preacher of the gospel that day, along with seven, uh, six other pastors at the St. Philip AME Church. Uh, at 12 noon, we're going to be celebrating the last seven words at St. Paul AME. Uh, then at 7 p.m., we will have our last seven words service hosted here at the Springfield Baptist Church at 7 p.m. There are other churches coming together, uh, seven pastors from Newton County and Rockdale County will be coming to Springfield Baptist Church to share the word. There's a graphic there for you to see who's going to be preaching and declaring the word here at Springfield Baptist Church. Then I want to make you aware that there is an active shooter training. It's, a, it's unfortunate that we've got to, to, to tie up time during Holy Week uh, and our Holy Week announcements to talk about active shooter training. But one of the things that makes us uh, a safe church uh, is our security team being in conjunction, being connected to uh, all of the local municipalities and, and police officers and, and sheriff offices uh, in this community. Uh, and I want to thank God for Mark Thomas, who's our head of security here at Springfield uh, and our ministry protection team at 10 a.m. on Saturday. Uh, we will be in the worship center. We need as many people as possible because uh, to the extent that we can make this uh, kind of uh, uh, similar to what we experience on Sundays in terms of attendance, this training will help our staff our ministries, it'll help uh, all of the law enforcement uh, to know how to keep us safe. And so I thank you uh, for those of you who are going to contribute some time to be a part of active shooter training. I want to make you aware that Resurrection Sunday, we are going to be in two services. At 7 a.m., we're going to be here for sunrise service. At 7 a.m., uh, we will start outside and then our uh, we will conclude our service inside. So at some point during the 7 a.m. service, there will be a processional inside of the sanctuary. We look forward to welcoming you and your families uh, at 7 a.m. on Sunday. And then our uh, mid-morning service is at 10 a.m. Uh, right here at Springfield Baptist Church and on all of our social media platforms. Uh, remember that as we are going into the spring break season in Newton County and Rockdale County and surrounding counties that the Springfield Baptist Church scholarship season has opened up. The submission, the submission deadline for scholarship applications is Friday, 
April the 12th. So please make sure, ensure that you and your families uh, from the class of 2025, or if you're already in college, the class of 2024, that is, or if you're already in school, that you, you are being considered for a Springfield Baptist Church scholarship uh, for the year 2024. Uh, I'm grateful for so much that's going on in our ministry. We, we want to certainly bring attention to Holy Week. Uh, we've got a wonderful uh, 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 calendar of events for the month of April. Uh, but y'all, resurrection is the center. It is the, the cornerstone of, of our faith. And we want to certainly give all the attention that it is due. I hope to see you on Good Friday uh, and also again on Resurrection Sunday as we celebrate here at the Springfield Baptist Church. It's March the 27th, and uh, it, there's not very many uh, March dates where uh, uh, years where Resurrection Sunday falls in the month of March. Uh, there's not many Holy Weeks that fall during the month of March, and so. Uh, the challenge for me is to make sure that we celebrate uh, Women's History Month and also that we celebrate Holy Week at the same time. And the Lord shared, shared with me that, hey, what a great opportunity during Bible study to talk about the women of Holy Week. And uh, I want to talk today about the women of Holy Week. And I want to encourage you to turn your Bibles to Mark chapter 15. Mark chapter 15, we're going to be talking about uh, the women of Holy Week. And again, I want to ask that you be in prayer with members of our congregation who are going through sickness, who are recovering from surgery. I want to ask that you be in prayer with those who are going to be uh, uh, laying their family members to rest. And certainly we ask that you be in prayer with Leslie Bailey Clark, uh, who is uh, who lost her, her sister uh, some weeks ago, who now is preparing to lay her 96-year-old mother to, to rest. Daisy Bailey transitioned uh, back on March the 21st, and uh, she was the mother of eight children. Uh, and uh, of course, Leslie Bailey Clark is one of her daughters. Her mother-in-law, of, of Oswell Clark and, and grandmother of Colleyanna Clark, uh, who are members of our church. Um, homegoing services are scheduled for next week, Monday, April the 1st at 11 a.m. at Sellers Funeral Home in Ocala, Florida, uh, followed by the interment at the Highland Memorial Park. We know that there are members of our, of our uh, Disciples of Hope Ministry and uh, whom she works closely with. There are members of our music team and music ministry who work so closely with Leslie uh, who, wanted to, who wanted to make sure that they knew uh, when the homegoing service. And so we want to make, make sure that you knew and pass that along to you and keep her in your prayers as they prepare for this homegoing service during this Holy Week experience. I want to share with you about the women of Holy Week. And, and, I, and as I talk about the women of Holy Week, I want to say something about this new Bible that is on the market now. It's called the Breathe Life Bible by Thomas Nelson Publishers. The Breathe Life Bible is a Bible that is marketed toward putting our faith in action. Uh, Thomas Nelson took on this project to market a Bible, not exclusively, but certainly comprehensively towards African-American people. Um, by percentage, African-Americans are the people who read the Bible more than any other demographic. That's a fact. I, I wrote about that in my doctoral thesis. Um, it creates a, a great opportunity to uh, talk about a biblical worldview. It takes a, a, a great opportunity to be a building block for our community moving forward. And Thomas Nelson saw fit to do the Breathe Life Bible. And uh, there are two women who are the general editors of the Breathe Life Bible. Uh, as we talk about the women of Holy Week, I wanna talk about Michelle Clark Jenkins, who's a general editor 
and Springfield Baptist Church's own Stephanie Perry Moore. Stephanie Perry Moore is, is, a, is an author in her own right and also a member of Springfield Baptist Church. We celebrate her and her husband, uh, Minister Derek Moore, uh, who is um, uh, on the staff at South Carolina for the South Carolina Gamecock football team. He spent so many years with the, Christian, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes and also with Georgia Tech. Uh, he was even uh, a member of the Atlanta Falcons as a player. And we celebrate the Moore family and the Jenkins family uh, for the Breathe Life Bible. I am uh, grateful I'm ex to have had the opportunity at Stephanie's invitation to have participated in the Breathe Life Bible. Uh, I, am, I have written uh, the overview uh, and the Breathe Life portion uh, that is at that can be found at the beginning of every New Testament Bible, New Testament book of the Bible. All 27 New Testament books of the Bible uh, are, uh, you'll find an overview from your pastor. And I'm excited about that, uh, not only to see my name in print, to see my scholarship in print, but all my, all my preaching life, and I've been preaching more than 30 years, I always consult commentary and overviews of the Bible before I preach and before I teach the word of God. And, and I'm grateful uh, that my commentary now, that my uh, scholarship is now available to a new generation of Bible readers. Uh, and I'm excited and I'm grateful that uh, Stephanie Perry Moore uh, and Michelle Clark Jenkins made that possible. Uh, if you'd like to order the Breathe Life Bible, there is a, a promo code uh, that you can utilize. It's, it's SBC uh, dollar sign five, SBC dollar sign five, uh, and you can get a a a, 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 uh, a discount on this Bible. And uh, if you get one, I'll make sure that I'll sign it, and we'll see if we can get Stephanie to sign it. But it's a wonderful accomplishment. They're available in softback. They're available in paperback. Uh, they're available in com commemorative uh, uh, books as well. There's also, they're also available in hardback. You can get this in black or purple. And I'm grateful uh, again for the women who brought us uh, the Bible, the Breathe Life Bible. And we celebrate what God continues to do uh, in the world of publication and biblical publication. One of the things that we saw during the pandemic is a dramatic decrease in the number of Bibles that were purchased. And so it's time to make sure that the Bible remains the number one best-selling book that has ever been printed. We're talking tonight about the women of Holy Week and I want to start by reading Mark chapter 15, verse number 40. The Bible says, There were also women looking on from afar, among whom were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James the less and of Joseph, and Salome, who also followed him and ministered to him when he was in Galilee. And I love this final clause this B clause of the 44th, 44th, 41st verse, and many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem. It names about four women, but it makes clear that there were not just other women, but many other women who are not named, who came up with Jesus to Jerusalem, the women of Holy Week. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We bless you and we honor you. We pray, God, for Leslie Bailey Clark. We thank you, God, for these women who've given us the Breathe Life Bible. And we thank you for the women of Holy Week who made the Bible possible in the first place. For whom, had it not been for their contribution? we wouldn't have the gospel that we have now. Thank you, God, for who you are and for what you've done. 
for the women that you've named and the women that weren't named. We give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. I want to turn your attention to John 19. When Jesus is hanging on the cross, the Bible says, now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, Mary, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. We've got four women at the foot of Je at, at the cross. Mary, Jesus' aunt, Mary's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. And the Bible says, when Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. Then he said to, to the disciple, behold your mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her to his own home. I want to talk about the women of Holy Week. Uh, the women that are named and the women that are not named. The first name, of course, is Mary, the mother of Jesus. And we come to know who this Mary is because an angel visits her in Luke chapter 1. And the Bible says in Luke chapter 1, verse 30 through 33, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. The angel says to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son. That son, we know him to be Jesus the Christ. She brings forth a son after going through marital strife, after avoiding a potential divorce, after angels ministering to her and ministering to her husband in dreams. She brings forth a son, and in, and in Luke chapter 2, she brings Jesus to the temple to be, to be uh, circumcised according to the Hebraic law, the Judaic law, excuse me. And then, then Simeon, the Bible says, shows up. At, in the temple, Simeon is there in the temple when they bring the baby in. And the Bible says, Simeon blessed them and said to, his, his, to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and the rising of many in Israel and for a sign which will be spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Simeon warns her, this child is going to cause many to fall and many to rise. And his life is going to pierce you also. His, his walk is going to pierce you as well. There's, there's power coming, but there's also pain coming. And when we get to Mark 15 and John chapter 19, where Mary is looking up at her son dying on a cross. The prophecy of Simeon is coming to pass. And a, soul is pier a, a, a sword is piercing Mary's own heart as her son is dying on a cross. Wrongfully convicted and dying. Blemish free, knew no sin, but her son is dying on the cross. And Simeon warned her about it days after his birth. And 33 and a half years later, 
She's feeling the sword. This is, this is Women's History Month. And the narrative that we celebrate every Resurrection Sunday and every Sunday when you're a Christian, the narrative that we celebrate as the cornerstone of our faith, women are at the cornerstone of that story. We know the story of Mary. Mary, the mother of Jesus. We know a whole lot less about Mary's sister. Mother Mary's sister, this has to be the aunt of Jesus. There's so many Marys in the Bible that scholars uh, don't have a whole lot of widespread agreement about which Mary is which. And are some of the Marys really one Mary? Some people think, some scholars believe that this Mary, the sister of, of, of Mary, is, is, is uh, that this woman who's the, the sister of Mary is, is also Salome in the Bible. In Mark's gospel, Salome is one who stood at the foot of, of Jesus, uh, uh, who, who also comes to the cross, who, who also is there to plant uh, planning to anoint the body of Jesus the next day in Matthew, in Mark chapter 16, verse number one. Salome could be Mary's sister, the aunt of Jesus, whose nephew is hanging on the cross. So we're not just here watching a, watching a mother watch her son die. We're here watching a mother and a sister watching a a son and a nephew die, but these mother, this mother, these sisters are at the foot of the cross comforting each other, managing their pain. Do, do you know, do you have any, any friends? Do you have any sisters? Do you have any, any women in your life who are helping you to manage the pain and the pierce? that comes from the swords of life. We have Mary, the mother of Jesus, and we have Mother Mary's sister, who could also be Salome. Then we have another Mary, Mary the wife of Clopas, who could also be Mary the mother of James and John. Matthew, uh, Mark's gospel and Matthew's gospel talks about this all this Mary, the wife of Clopas, also accompanying them to the sepulchre the next day after, uh, uh, you know, three days later after they have, he, he has been in, his body has been in the tomb for three nights where Jesus lay. They come for burial rites on Sunday morning. This Mary, the wife of Clopas, is at the cross and she's also at the tomb. And the fourth woman that's mentioned at the cross and also at the tomb is Mary of Magdala. We know her as Mary of Magdalene. In Luke's gospel, the eighth chapter, the Bible says of Mary Magdalene that seven demons had come out of her. That Christ had delivered her from seven demons. And sometimes when we talk about Mary of Magdalene, we, we think of a, of a woman who is downtrodden, a woman that is poor, a woman that is um, uh, broken. But there's evidence that Mary of, Magda, Mary of Magdala is is not a poor woman, but she's a woman of means. It's amazing how we attribute uh, being a poor woman to being a demonic woman. But Mary of Magdalene, Mary Magdalene, is not a poor woman. We we think that rich women can't be demonic, but this text proves to us that Christ delivers a woman of means from seven demons, and as a result of that deliverance, 
It's Mary Magdalene in John's gospel, the 11th through the 18th verse, who is the first to see the risen Christ. The women of Holy Week, Mary, Mary's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. The story couldn't be told without the women of Holy Week. Without the women of Holy Week, we don't even have preserved necessarily the last seven words of Jesus Christ. Without the women of Holy Week, we don't have the initial witness to the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. We were so excited to have Dr. Billy Cox uh, be the representative of Springfield Baptist Church for our last seven word service because it's so appropriate to make sure that women, that, that we see women operate, that we see women preaching during Holy Week. As a matter of fact, we have a community sunrise service at 6 a.m. at the Ball Rock Baptist Church. I'll be there at 6 and I'll be at Springfield at 7 on, sun, on Resurrection Sunday. And Pastor Billy Cox is going to be preaching the word at the community-wide sunrise service, how appropriate to stand in the experience of Mary Magdalene. The women of Holy Week are the ones who give us the narrative. And remember, there's a whole lot of women whose name is not even mentioned. Joanna, don't forget about Mary and Martha the sisters of Lazarus. There are so many women whose names we don't know, whose experience give us a total picture of what happened on Holy Week, what happened on Good Friday, and praise be to God, what happened on Resurrection Sunday. Happy Women's History Month to the women of Springfield Baptist Church. And to those who are witnessing and, and worshiping with us during this Bible study, we don't take lightly the contribution of women, not only in our church, but in our world and in our community. I've been reading a history book entitled Stamp from the Beginning by Ibram Kendi. And uh, it's such a thorough book. And there's so many ideas. It's the history of racist ideas. And, and I gotta tell, I gotta tell Ibram Kendi, I can only take about 10 pages at a time of this book. And one of the narratives that he shared with us, one of the stories that he shared with us that I did, and I, I love a book that leaves you talking about things that you didn't know. Ibram Kendi tells the story of a woman that I didn't know existed. Her name, Sarah Bartman. Sarah Bartman, who was born in South in Southern Africa and uh, a member of the Khoi tribe, K-H-O-I, of Southern Africa. Um, the Khoi people were considered the most base of human uh, existence. Because in order, to, in order for racism to persist, you have to believe in a hierarchy of humanity. And white men built a hierarchy of humanity that put Europeans at the top and Africans at the bottom. And at the bottom of the bottom, according to white anthropologists, at the bottom of the bottom were the Khoi people, the Khoi tribe of South Africa. And Sarah Bartman 
was a woman from the tribe, from the Khoi tribe of Southern Africa. And as legend would have it and as history would have it, she was a woman of large, a large buttocks, large uh, female anatomy, which led to, uh, which allowed, uh, which which played into this notion that people of color were intellectually inferior, but were also hypersexual. That our brains were the were the size of monkeys' brains, but but our sexuality was hypersexual. It also played into this myth and and lie that black women have a higher threshold for pain than other women. It's just a myriad of, of awful racist ideas that led to some very unfortunate consequences like slavery, like sexual abuse, like exploitation and perversion. And Sarah Bartman became in many ways, the image, the poster child, if you will, the, the, the epitome of over-sexualized black women, hypersexual black women. Uh, her so-called master, Hendrick Caesar, brought Sarah Bartman to London in 1810, and he brought her there to exploit her and to exploit her anatomy, and to affirm racist ideas about black women. And at that time, she was in her mid-30s. And uh, they would put her in vaudeville shows. They would, they would bring her around with a rope around her neck. They would allow people to measure her hips and her buttocks area. And all of that became, all of that berating was used to reinforce racist ideas about black women. They took her to Paris in 1814 and they allowed her to become an, this hypersexual object exploited by her enslavers, her captors. She died in 1815. And uh, Ibram Kendi says, no black woman was the subject of more obituaries in Paris than Sarah Bartman. She died of pneumonia. She couldn't have been more than 40 when she died. A man named Cuvier secured her corpse, brought her to a lab, and conducted a scientific rape of Sarah Bartman. Cracked open her chest, and I apologize for anybody who may be traumatized by our history, cut her genitals they boiled her skin away and reassembled her bones into a skeleton and I was traumatized to read this I didn't I had never heard of it and I I can understand why some people don't want to tell our history. But Sarah Bartman's skeleton and genitals and brain were displayed publicly until 1974. It took President Nelson Mandela in 1994 to request the remains of Sarah Bartman 
And it wasn't until 2002 until France returned her remains and she was laid to rest properly. There's a little Sarah Bartman in every black woman. My grandmothers, Myrtle and Ruby. There's a little Sarah Bartman. My mother and her sisters, my father's sisters, my aunts, my wife, my daughters, and I salute you because nobody turns pain into power better than a black woman. I urge you, if you haven't had a chance, a movie was released this past Friday called Shirley on Netflix. And it is a biopic of the life of the first African-American woman to ever run for president, a woman named Shirley Chisholm. Shirley Chisholm used to be the joke of these United States of America in, in Congress and boardrooms, but if there was no Shirley Chisholm, there could be no Justice Katanji Brown. If there were no Shirley Chisholm, there would be no Vice President Kamala Harris. I salute Sarah Bartman, I salute Shirley Chisholm. I was leaving our church this past Sunday and uh, at the main entrance of our church and exit of our church, candidates for office left 11 signs of people who are running for office, 11 signs. Ten of them are women, many of whom are members of the Springfield Baptist Church. And I want to take a moment on this Holy Week to say, in the name of Sarah Bartman, in the name of Shirley Chisholm, in the name of Mary, the sister of Mary, in the name of Mary, the wife of Cl Clopas, Mary Magdalene, Mary and Martha, Joanna, and all the unnamed women. Praise be unto God for the voice of women. For whom had it not been for those voices, the gospel would be incomplete. Father, we thank you and we praise you and we honor you today for this Holy Week witness. We pray now, God, that you would touch, heal, and deliver, that you would guide and direct. We stand, God, in on the shoulders, not just of great men, but of great women. Thank you, God, for sending your Holy Spirit to impregnate a woman who gave birth to a Savior. And I thank you now, God, for who that Savior is and the women who made a way for him when he walked this earth. Now, God, touch, heal, and deliver. Allow this moment to be a moment of reflection Thank you for the ability to turn trauma into truth, trauma into triumph. Thank you for the ability to turn pain into power 
and purpose. Have your way now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. I thank God for Holy Week. I thank God for this Holy Wednesday. I hope to see you Friday. I hope to see you Sunday. But before we go, we want to give somebody an opportunity to confess with their mouths and believe in their hearts on the Lord Jesus Christ that he was raised from the dead with all power in his hands. The Bible says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Can we just stop ranking sin? Because all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All of us needed to be pardoned because of our sin. And he is pardoned for sin and a truth that, that endureth. Thine own dear treasure to, to, to deliver us and to guide. Strength for today, the, the songwriter says. Bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with 10,000 beside. Great is thy faithfulness. God has been faithful towards us. And the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart on the Lord Jesus that he was raised from the dead with all power in his hands, you shall be saved. I invite you now to pray this prayer with me, a prayer of salvation. Father, I'm a sinner, but I know I've been saved by grace because today I confess my sins, knowing that you are the one who will cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And I believe that Jesus was raised from the dead on Resurrection Sunday, 1,991 years ago. And I give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise for it. Thank you for saving me and making me a part of the body of Christ. Have your way in my life as I seek to honor you with my change. Amen, amen, and amen. If you just gave your life to Christ, we applaud you. 1,991 years. Can you imagine living at a time when you couldn't give your life to Christ? We are so blessed to be living in as a beneficiary of the story that we read about today. And I'm thankful that you get, you get a chance, just like I had a chance, to confess Christ in the part of my sins. If you just did that, there's a QR code. It's right in here somewhere. Please scan the QR code, fill out that form right now. And I'm trusting in faith that somebody's doing that tonight. If the code doesn't work, then text the word JOIN, J-O-I-N, to 855-465-1937. We invite you to do that either way. And I want to also give somebody an opportunity because one of the, the fruit of the church is change lives. And what we do here at Springfield is that we become better stewards of what God has given to us. We give back to the church so that the church can be the nebulous, the, 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 the headquarters where we, where we tell this story about Christ and we help people to change their lives. And we support the church through our stewardship. The Bible talks about tithing in love and obedience to our God. That's one of the core values of Springfield Baptist Church, the T in growth, tithing in love and obedience to our God. We invite you to do that now. Uh, it's a dime from every dollar. That's what a tithe is. It's the tenth. It's ten dollars. It's a dollar from every ten dollars. It's ten dollars from every one hundred dollars, and so on. It's a million dollars from every ten million dollars, because whatever you have is what God has given you. Not just it ain't just what you earned. It's what God gave you. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell 
therein. You think you earned it, but it's really that God, God that provided it. He's Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider. Not saying you didn't work hard, you do work hard. But everything that we have is because of what God has given to us. And we try to honor God. And he says, not only honor me, but test me. See if I will not open the windows of heaven. When you tie, see if I won't open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. You have not the room to receive. The Bible says, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can tell a mountain to move. Y'all, it's something, something powerful about a seed. And we invite you to sow your seeds here at the Springfield Baptist Church. Uh, I thank God for you and I praise God for your continued faithfulness in giving here at Springfield Baptist Church. You can give by PayPal, GiveLify. You can do it on Cash App. You can also do it on PushPay. But the number one portal through which we give, there's a graphic right here. There's a, another QR code you can scan to get to a place called Realm. Realm is our number one portal because when you give a gift at Realm, 100% comes to the Springfield Baptist Church. No transaction fees. We invite you to do that here at Springfield Baptist Church. You can also text the word growth, our core values, to 73256. And that will also take you to realm. I thank you for your time. I thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you for uh, you spending time talking about the women of Holy Week. Uh, thank you for learning more about the, the Breathe Life Bible. Let us pray. And please stay tuned for uh, visual announcements, our video announcements that will follow. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, we bless you, and we magnify you. We pray now for benediction from this place, but never from your presence. In Christ Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen, amen, and amen. I can't wait till Sunday morning where we declare he is risen. He is risen indeed. God bless you, Springfield. Springfield, exciting news. Our 2024 scholarship season is now officially open. Whether you are a graduating high school senior or currently enrolled in college, we've got scholarship opportunities waiting for you. The deadline for application is April 15th. Head over to Realm for all the details and application forms. Don't miss out on this chance to support your education journey. Experience the profound journey of Holy Week with us at Springfield Baptist Church, where each service is a step closer to salvation. Continue the journey with us for our Good Friday service, March 29th at 7 p.m. for a moving seven last words sermon featuring esteemed guest ministers leading the charge. A deeply reflective experience that will be held in the Springfield Sanctuary. And to culminate the festivities, join us for Resurrection Sunday, a day of high praise and worship starting at 7 a.m. sunrise service, a moment of spiritual renewal as we celebrate our risen Savior. Then at 10 a.m. inside the sanctuary for praise and worship, and remember to wear white attire as we celebrate the glorious resurrection of our Lord and Savior. And don't miss the opportunity to invite your friends and family to join us on Resurrection Sunday. Remember, if you want to stay up to date with more announcements like these, stay connected with our church family like never before by signing up for instant updates by texting UPDATES to 855-465-1937 and never miss out. Be in the know. And there you have it. These are your announcements, Springfield. Please continue to stay connected by visiting our website at sbcgrowth.church connecting to Rail, or following us on our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, or YouTube. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning in. Have a blessed week.